Hi everyone, welcome to Edipedia World. I am Sia Radhika Singhal. So we were discussing regarding different methods of hedging. Today we are going to continue with one more method, money market hedge. Money market hedge is a type of hedging where it involves borrowing in one currency and conversion of the proceeds in another currency. Well, this type of hedging is only where there is a disequilibrium position between the money market and the foreign market. That means where the interest rate parity theorem does not hold, that is the interest rate differential is not equal to the spot and forward rate differential, there the importer or exporter could hedge themselves by using money market hedge. So for an importer, a money market hedge can be used by determining the amount of foreign currency which can be invested today so that the proceeds of that amount when it is realizable and the interest amount is sufficient to make the payment of entire import bill. So in money market hedge, an importer will first has to compute that how much amount he has to invest today. So whatever amount that he is investing today plus the interest receivable on that amount that should be equal to the payment he has to make. So that amount of investment is equal, the period of that amount of investment is equal to the credit period offered by the foreign party. I think it's better to do one example and then understand all these steps. An Indian importer has to pay dollar one lakh three thousand at the end of six months. The spot rate is 45.40 plus 46 and six months forward rate is 48.20 and the ask rate is 48.80. The rate of interest is deposit is 6% and borrow is 8%. In India, the deposit rate is 12% and the borrow rate is 15%. So in such scenario, if you compute the six month forward rate basis the deposit rate in US and India, the forward rate would either be more or less but will not be equal to 48.20. And because of this disequilibrium, the importer could benefit itself from the money market hedging. So the importer has to pay 1,3,000. So the first step is to compute that how much amount has to be invested so that the amount should be invested in US market because the payment has to be made in dollar. So the first is to determine that amount which is to be invested so that you can make 1,3,000 after six months. The next step is determine the home currency to be borrowed today to buy the foreign currency from the bank. So 1 lakh 3 is to be paid after 6 months. How much amount to be invested will be after reducing it with the interest rate for the 6 months. That much amount is to be borrowed which is to be borrowed from the home currency market. Then repay the home currency borrowed along with the interest rate and you have to compare the cash flows with the other methods of hedging. So in our example the investor has to pay 1 lakh 3000. So 1 lakh 3000 is to be paid after 6 months. If 1 lakh rupees is deposited for 6 months, you will receive 1 lakh 3000 after 6 months, which can be computed by 1 lakh 3 divided by the deposit rate in US, which is 6% per annum, so 3% for 6 months. So 1 lakh amount is to be borrowed today. Spot rate of bank is 46. So to deposit or to deposit 1 lakh in US, you have to borrow 46 lakh in Indian market. So if you borrow this 46 lakh in Indian market, you have to pay an interest at the rate of 15% per annum. That is 7.5% for those 6 months, which is equals to 3,45,000. So at the end of the 6 months, the net amount you have to pay is 49,45,000. So if you borrow 46 lakhs today, you will receive 1 lakh dollar. This 1 lakh dollar will be invested in US market, which will be converted to 1 lakh 3,000 after 6 months and you can pay off that amount. So the total outflow from your pocket after six months will be 46 lakh principal amount plus interest amount, which is 49 lakh 45,000. In case the importer goes for forward market hedge, then he has to pay 48.80 for 1 lakh 3,000, which is equal to 50 lakh 26,400 as compared to 49 lakh 45,000 in money market hedge. So the outflow in money market hedge is less than the forward market hedge. So the importer will go for money market hedge. The next is when there's an exporter. So then importer will have to make the payment and exporter will receive the payment. So exporter will receive the payment in rupees. So he can borrow from the US market and can convert that amount into Indian rupee. 
whatever amount that he invested in Indian rupee plus the interest receivable is more or the forward market is compared. So for in a money market hedge for an exporter, the first amount is to determine the amount of foreign currency to be borrowed today. Because after that specified period, you get that foreign currency through which you can repay back that borrowed amount. So that is completely paid off. So you have to pay principal amount plus the interest payable on borrowings. This should be equal to your export bill. The next is convert the foreign currency borrowed at home currency at spot bid rate. And the third is invest the home currency receivable in step two. So all these are though I have noted down the steps. But if the concept is simple that you will invest in market, one market and paid off in another market. So for an exporter, if the amount is receivable, we will borrow from in that currency because ultimately you're going to receive dollars bills, which you can paid off with the export bill amount. Whatever amount is there for the time being, you can invest into the Indian market and the interest receivable plus the principal amount will be compared with the forward market hedging. Let's do one exporter example also. So an Indian exporter has made an export to USA and US dollar 61.61,500 which are receivable at six months from today. The spot rate is 45.20 bid rate and 45.70 ask rate. The six months forward rate is dollar one is 46.65 and ask rate is 47. The rate of interest for six months in US is 4% deposit rate and 5% borrowing rate. In India, the deposit rate is 12% and the borrowing rate is 15%. So if the exporter goes for money market hedge, how much amount he can borrow so that that same can be paid off by an export bill. So if your export bill is 61,500, you can borrow. So you have to take an interest payment of rupees 5%, which is the borrow rate for one year. So for Six months it will be 2.5%. So 61,500 is the X amount borrowed plus 2.5% of X amount, which is equal to 61,500, or it could be computed as 61,500 divided by 1.1025. So you can borrow 60,000 today because ultimately after six months you can pay off the interest amount and the right and the six interest amount and the principal amount. So if you are going to borrow 60,000, that you can convert in Indian rupee at the spot bid rate, which is 45.20. So today you will receive 27,12,000. This 27,12,000 could be invested in Indian market at 6% rate. So you'll receive an interest of 1,62,720. So the net receivable after six months will be 28,74,720. However, in case the exporter go for forward market hedge, then the amount receivable after six months will be 61,500 multiply by the bid rate after six months forward rate 46.45 which is equals to 28,56,675. So when you compare both these options, the gross amount receivable in money market hedge is more than the amount receivable in forward market hedge. So the exporter could go for money market hedge option. Clear? The other methods of hedging before discussing this, I told you that Money market hedge is only possible when there is not an interest rate parity theorem. So if all the assumption of interest rate parity theorem are met and the forward and spot rate differential, they are in equilibrium, then there will not be any difference between the forward market hedge and money market hedge. Money market hedge will only give you a result when the assumption of IRTP and that equilibrium situation does not exist. Because money market hedge is only taking the beneficial of the difference between the interest rate differential and the spot and forward rate differential. Correct. So now the other method of hedging are currency swap. Swapping means exchange. So currency swap means exchange of the currencies. So when two parties of two different countries they have different risk exposure like the dollar or US party has an Indian exposure and an Indian party has US dollar exposure. So both the countries, they could come together. Remember we discussed interest rate swap in different derivatives. 
Likewise, we can go for currency swap also. Of interest rate, that is the borrowing. They exchange their currency. They are bought together by an intermediary. And both get some mutual benefit out of it. So this is similar to what we discussed in interest rate swapping during derivatives. The next is exposure netting. So exposure netting is generally used when the associate companies have payables and receivables amongst themselves. So let's say that there is a holding company and there is a subsidiary company. There are certain things which are receivable, certain amount which is receivable by a holding company from the subsidiary company and certain amount which is payable by the holding company to subsidiary company and both the companies are in different countries. So to save themselves from paying spreads and all, they used to go for netting. So for example, that the holding company owes dollar four lakh to subsidiary company and the subsidiary company owes the dollar five lakh. So subsidiary company is in India and the holding company is in USA. So in other ways, there's a net settlement could be done that the subsidiary company pay dollar one lakh to the holding company. So it will save the transaction cost because holding company need not to pay the spread on dollar four lakh and the subsidiary company need not to pay dollar five lakh spread. So net amount to be paid is dollar one lakh by the subsidiary company to the holding company and this will save the transaction cost. The other method is matching. So in this method, the companies, they match their foreign exchange risk exposure their inflow with their outflows. So let's say that there is X limited which has to pay dollar one lakh to pay incorporation which is in UK and X limited has to receive dollar eighty thousand from Q incorporation which is also in UK. So either X limited could go for two transactions where it has to pay dollar one lakh from P incorporation and receive eighty thousand from Q incorporation or matching could be used where Q incorporation could pay it off dollar eighty thousand instead of X limited to P incorporation, and the net amount of twenty thousand could be paid by X limited to Y incorporation. This will also save the transaction cost and also helps to save the margins to be paid over the exchange. The next is currency invoicing. Currency invoicing means invoicing in your home currency. So if you are a company running in India. So irrespective you are an importer or an exporter, you will always raise your invoice in your home currency. So when you raise that invoice, what will happen? This will save you from foreign exchange fluctuation risk. But this will also lead to loosening of your customers. Since customers are raised invoice because they are exposed to foreign exchange fluctuation risk now. So this will also distract the customers. So currency invoicing is generally used by mature companies or very famous companies. A new or a growing company cannot go for currency invoicing. So these all are the methods through which a company can hedge themselves against foreign exchange fluctuation risk. There are many other methods also to hedge themselves from foreign exchange fluctuation risk. That's all for today. Thank you so much and keep smiling.